thank you very much, everybody. Um, it's uh, difficult to give a talk when everybody has already shown all the techniques. So I'll give my take on the below in the ankle angioplasty. Uh, I'm a vascular surgeon based out of Singapore. Um, sort of swapped out places with Trump. He's in Singapore and I'm over here. <laughs> and that'll be a good thing. But anyway, so the first question we need to ask is when do you do below knee interventions? In my opinion, the aggressiveness of intervention depends very much on the size of the wound. So a small little wound like that would take a 22 caliber. A large uh, wound like that would take a rail gun. And of course, in a massive wound like that, you launch um, nuclear war. So um, this is courtesy of Roberto Ferrezzi. And this slide shows the extent of below knee vessel involvement. In his study of close to 2,000 patients, he found that in one quarter of these patients, uh, they had arch disease. And in more than 50% of these patients, they had two to three below the, knee, below the ankle vessel disease. And outflow is extremely important. We don't look at outflow often enough. And could this be the reason why tibial vessels are actually going down? Now, we know from several studies, and this is a study based out of Japan, that if you look at the outcomes of rate of wound healing, that pedal artery interventions is associated with a higher uh, rate of wound healing in a shorter period of time. So the typical patient like that with a normal vasculature as compared to a patient with a failure of the distribution system, according to Roberto, the effects are pretty clear. If you do a plain x-ray, severe calcification in these diabetics, and we're starting to see more and more of these patients because we're not amputating them. We're treating their tibial vessels. We're salvaging a leg. But they do come back many years later with more distal vessel disease. So you see, in a vessel like that, in that failure of, uh, of the arch, uh, no arch visible, and just small twigs going to the toes. In a patient like that with, with a dorsalis pedis was treated with the intervention without treating the arch subsequently um, is what we call small artery disease or what Roberto calls small artery disease was associated with a sad outcome or SAD uh, with a baloney amputation and a breakdown of the BKA stem. So when should we not do below the ankle angioplasty? A typical patient like this in our hands, a third, patient, a third toe gangrene. PT was crossed and the plain balloon angioplasty was done. And we subsequently went on to try and open up the AT and DP to get a better flow and balloon angioplasty of the arch. And one of the problems with balloon angioplasty is you see a great reconstruction of the whole arch, but actually you've lost all the tibial digital vessels in the foot. And this, so this, this slide tells us that below the ankle angioplasty and arch angioplasty can be very dangerous, and this patient subsequently end up with a four-foot amputation. What if you get away with it, and what are the, re all the, what are the consequences of restenosis? Well, in an initial angiogram like that, treated with extensive balloon angioplasty, and control angiogram at six months, leads you to wonder that the restenosis that you see, in, are you actually predisposing the patient to subsequent and, uh, ischemia? Now, if you're going to do below the ankle angioplasty, one of the most important things is basic imaging requirements. High quality imaging in two dimensional view, both the AP and the lateral projection, having all the toes split helps you to appreciate the anatomy and, uh, and, and, and the presence of digital vessels. Choice of success, in, in, my, in my institution, we do a combined revascularization with Brightman under a popliteal block. Um, with this anesthesia, with 10 mils of lidocaine around the nerve, we are able to render the patient completely anesthetic and completely immobile, and we're able to perform tibial angioplasty and the soft tissue debridement all at the same time. Now, in my opinion, popliteal anesthesia is well suited for this cause. Patients are pain-free. In my opinion, I think there's less spasm, and they're movement-free as well because the block gives you anesthesia and paralyzes the leg. So why I usually use a long sheath that's parked at the popliteal artery, and that allows uh, with the five French sheath that allows double wiring and balloon angioplasty. The retrograde excess, many speakers have spoken about that. For below, for below the ankle, retrograde excess is done both under ultrasound and fluoroscopy, and you can actually puncture very distal vessels. Uh, we routinely use an ultrasound guided puncture uh, under longitudinal section. One of the things we like to do with the posterior tibial artery actually is to dorsiflex the, the, the ankle to try and straighten and get the artery in a straight line, and then puncture with the echogenic needle and subsequently pass um, the wire and do our intervention. We also use a high-frequency probe. This is a high-frequency probe from Sonocyte. And with that, we're able to puncture even very distal vessels like the lateral plantar artery, in this case, an O14 wire going into the medial plantar vessel, then trying to direct the wire up. 
A case of that with a transplanter approach, a patient with a posterior, tib uh, posterior tibial angiosome, and where our target was to open the anterior tibial to supply the dorsum of the foot. So this patient was recanalized from a transplanter approach with a variety of wires and a MATA XT balloon, and only using that to have the anterior tibial artery open from a retrograde approach to give a wound over the fifth toe and the dorsum of the foot uh, good blood flow. Now, several authors, for example, uh, Marco Manzi has uh, had very good experience with the direct digital access to the puncture. Um, in my experience, uh, I've had a very, uh, lot of difficulty trying to hit a very small digital vessel and tends to have a lot of spasms, so I don't have a lot of experience with direct digital access. Um, what we have had an experience as a surgeon is a direct cut down of the dorsalis pedis artery when ultrasound and fluoroscopy uh, retrograde access has failed. So this is a very benign procedure, small cut down, isolate the artery, uh, do a cut down and puncture the artery, and now small little series that we've written up, uh, we seem to have a good problem with no, no problems with the skin wound. My go-to wire is an atraumatic wire for below the ankle. Usually this is a PD2 wire or the command series of wires, and also the regardless series of wires from Masahi. And this is supported with uh, so dedicated support catheters, they are low in profile, pushable, they are correctly sized. Uh, I normally use the Amada XT, a small 1.5 by 20, a coyote, or a jade balloon, which is a non compliant hybrid monorail balloon. Shaping of wires, we shape them under a CTO shape. Or if in a very, very tight band of stenosis, like in this case, a very short band of the wire on a terumo band to cross a snake across the stenosis. Alternatively, in a sub intimal approach, you can also do what I call the Marco loop with an O14 wire and dissect the artery with not a broad loop but a very small ribbon. Strategies in crossing, I try to stay true limb most of the time, so the true limb and uh, angioplasty able to get a reasonable result even with some dissections. I try to avoid sub intimal entry. In this particular case, a full occlusion of the lateral plantar artery was recanalized with a sub intimal approach uh, with a turumo wire and in this case, re-entry. And in my experience, a sub below the ankle angioplasty, re-entry is dependent more of luck rather than skill. What I would like to do most of the time is to do an anti-grade re-entry using a retrograde wire dissection, so a case of full-length CTOs in multiple tibial vessels, a failed anti-grade uh, re-entry into the tibial vessel. This was attempted from a retrograde transplanter approach to dissect the plane from a retrograde approach and then pass the wire sub intimally all, with, all without ballooning of the arch. For a nice result in this. Of course, we also use the reverse cut technique. And I'll skip this because we have multi, uh, we've talked about this before. But with the reverse cut technique, we're able to do balloon angioplasty of the arch and get re entry with the help of a balloon. As in this case, and subsequently do full arch ballooning in the patient with Rutherford 6 gangrene, which subsequently healed the transmetatarsal amputation. Other strategies, because of the problems of full arch ballooning, are more of a partial arch ballooning. In this case, because of the wound was in the first toe, partial arch ballooning was done, and we could actually get good blood flow here without jeopardizing the rest of the arch. What we've come to use in the last several years is high pressure balloon angioplasty. In this particular case, recoil with standard balloons. After standard 3 by 40 semi-compliant balloons recoil and dissection, and this was treated with a high-pressure non-compliant balloon from August Nietzsche. And with that, you can see concentric luminal gain on a rotational angiogram. One can appreciate the, the benefit of using non-compliant balloons below the knee. Other novel techniques include below the ankle pierce technique in a patient with a very eccentric odd lesion. The focal high-pressure balloon did not open up. And this, was, um, this lesion even led to the rupture of the balloon, as in this case. This was treated with a pierce technique below the ankle to try and crack some of these lesions with an 18G needle. And with that, a high-pressure non-compliant balloon was finally able to open the vessel. You can see that pop. And finally, with a nice angiogram. So in summary, below the ankle interventions are increasingly required as we push the fight towards uh, more distally in CLI. Uh, it's not exactly risk-free. Dedicated wires and support catheters will increase the technical success. An optimal balloon angioplasty with non-compliant balloons, in my experience, is promising. Thank you very much.